the Unitarian Church of Edmonton. My name is Susan Rattan, as most of you know. I am your service leader today with the assistance of Janet Polkowski, who is our host, and Ruth Marriott, who is co-host. Our reader was to be Corrine Jackson, but she's unwell, so you're going to hear a little more of me than I expected. Love is the spirit of this community and serves law. This is our great covenant to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in love, and to help one another. I am now going to share my screen, I hope. We gather in gratitude on Treaty 6 land. A treaty is an inheritance, a responsibility, and a relationship. May we be good neighbors to one another, good stewards to our planet, and good ancestors to all of our children. I'm hearing noise, but is everybody else hearing it? Maybe if you're not, I'll just continue. Our prelude uh, today is a familiar UU song gathered here in the mystery of the hour. It is not sung by the uh, choir you see down there. It is going to be sung by Jess Wetman, who is choir director of the UU Church in Rhode Island. Gathered here in the mystery of the hour. chalice to start our service and I will give the opening words. This is a poem by Lynn Unger called Pandemic. What if you thought of it as the Jews consider the Sabbath, the most sacred of times? Cease from travel, cease from buying and selling, give up just for now on trying to make the world different than it is. Sing, pray, touch only those to whom you commit your life. Center down. And when your body has become still, reach out with your heart. Know that we are all connected in ways that are terrifying and beautiful. You can hardly deny that now. Know that our lives are in one another's hands. Surely that has come clear. Do not reach out your hands. Reach out your heart. Reach out your words. Reach out all the tendrils of compassion that move invisibly 
where we cannot touch. Promise this world your love, for better or for worse, in sickness and in health, so long as we all shall live. As you know, we do not pass the collection plate in a Zoom service, but we still need money in our church. We have no casual renters in the church at the moment and don't know when we will get any because they're largely choirs and a seniors uh, bridge group and so on. Uh, I have discovered that at the bottom of the main church website, page is uh, the link to Canada Helps and to ATB Cares and I figured out how to use ATB Cares but you can also still write a check put it in an envelope and mail it to the church because we get our mail from the church still and our um, charity of the month the center to end all sexual exploitation and you can go to its website if you choose and make a donation through its website. And I'm going to skip this one. All right. Reflection. Coping with the pandemic. Hang on here. The Guardian newspaper calls the social isolation most of us have been experiencing as a dull nightmare. We have been living in bubbles for four months. Yes, some of our bubbles are getting bigger. Some of us are doing more shopping and visiting than we did when the pandemic hit Alberta four months ago. But still, it's been a time like no other. Looking back at those pandemic months, we can acknowledge how difficult it has been. We have missed hugs, shared meals, concerts, travel, long evenings spent with friends and family. Much of my social life recently has depended on weather. Any gathering of people must be held outside, and if the rain comes, that's the end of it. I rely on three walking groups for my everyday, real people social life, and I treasure those walks. But I long to go out for coffee, or to a fringe festival play. And I long for my church and my choir to be back in action. As a retired person, I'm one of the lucky ones. My age makes me more susceptible to the COVID virus, but being retired, my income isn't threatened. Alberta's unemployment rate has been 15% in recent months. Those of you with young adults in your family will know how many have lost their jobs. I certainly have several in my own family. We know that this distancing from our fellow humans is, in, is key to keeping each other safe and keeping the pandemic in check here. So we have done our job, accepted the new rules and found ways to live with those rules. It is a tribute to the human spirit how people in these tough circumstances have found ways to brighten their day. Today, I want to salute our members, members as they find ways to live through this pandemic. Some people have baked. Alan Boyle has done some excellent bread baking, says his wife, Sylvia Crow. Some people have been sewing. Lilius Cowper has a puppy, which she got the very first of week of the COVID lockdown. And she's, I think, got her pu puppy Mitty in her lap right now. Yvonne Moreau has done a bunch of things. She baked, sewed, wrote a humorous story about a cowardly dashing dog inspired by her own dash and dog. Some like Ruth Patrick have embraced the new technology that can connect us. Ruth, who has an apartment, an apartment in the Rosedale Seniors Complex, has FaceTimed regularly with her family. She's also active on Facebook. 
Marilyn Gay helped host a small classical music concert in the park across from her house. And a number of church members have been quilt making. Here's a gorgeous one made by our own Will Adair. Well done, Will. Allie Hammington lives in a basement apartment and has no car, so her life was very much affected by the pandemic. The city bus wasn't safe for months and friends couldn't give her rides. But Allie found joy outside her window in the bird feeder hang on here, that she put up last fall. She says, I discovered a complex society living right under my nose. First, there was an uppity magpie whom Allie named Maggie, who came to the bird feeder every morning for peanuts. Then there was Nutsy, the little squirrel who lived in a nearby spruce tree. Then came other creatures like two blue jays named Allie, that Allie named Billy and Bobby. She has a little world that she can watch from her window. And those of you who follow Facebook know she's done all sorts of things and is now growing a garden. In such ways have many of us, I hope all of us, lifted our spirits. I started the isolation back in March full of ambition. Finally, I would read the famous work of Marcel Proust, The Remembrance of Things Past, which is more than 3,000 pages long. And I did read two thirds of it. I think I read 2,200 pages. Then I hit a wall and my big reading jag came to an end. More recently, I have been recording and watching the sitcom Big Bang Theory, which I never watched when it was first on. I think the switch from Proust to Big Bang indicates an underlying stress and sadness in me because of this pandemic. I just need a funny TV show as a little pick me up now and then. Like many of us, I have found joy in nature. The birds in my garden are a constant source of entertainment and the weeds a constant source of duty calling. All of us are finding our way through the challenges. I hope these Zoom church services have been a help to you, a way of being part of our community. I hope the photo of baby Ella, great granddaughter of our own Art Breyer, gives you a smile. As you can see, Ella already knows how lucky she is to live in Canada. Finally, I hope you will share with us the ways you have been getting through this pandemic in the breakout conversations that follow this service and in the care and connections time that happens right now. And I think for this care and connections, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and we'll just invite people to post on that chat. Let me see if you... All right. This is Ruth Marriott. I'm just watching the, the chats come in. Louise Church says, walking in the glorious fresh air and listening hard to the bird songs everywhere. Susan says she's been talking to her three sisters more than ever. 
Lilia says, thanks so much, Susan. It is a difficult time, but these reminders make us feel a lot better. Yvonne, for my sister and brother-in-law who put their farm up for sale this week, unable to make their mortgage payments anymore. Susan Lynch says, I've heard that the symphony is doing Friday concerts at La Bicyclette. Has anyone gone? Marge, my son started radiation for his throat cancer. My daughter got off a horse and broke nine ribs. Wow. Lorian, I'm deliberately scheduling time with friends for one-to-one -one outdoor get-togethers, really enjoying the more intimate walks. Lynn and John Turvey, a big thank you to all who are involved in building and maintaining the church website. It is now our lifeline and is nicely laid out and informative. Thank you. Karen Belita says, Alberta now has the highest number of active COVID cases per person in Canada. I'm very worried about everyone's safety. Yvonne, I finally found my creative rhythm, exclamation mark. Audrey Brooks, giving thanks to all who spoke at the genocide memorial, though some were in transition from one country to another. Also to Karen Belita for her help in it. Coralie and John say, cooking more meals together and gardening and walks. Ann and so Alan and Sylvia are doing childcare for our four-year-old granddaughter every other day as the daycare center that she usually attends at the Misericordia is closed due to COVID. Zoe says, I've been painting, meditating and gardening again. I've been focused on my mental health and nurturing my inside. Louise Jarich, I was inspired by Audrey's leadership at last week's session on the Genocide Memorial. This is an epic event. Beth Jenkins, thank goodness for good magazines and reopening of libraries. Janet, Janet Polkowski, thinking of my friend who is a nurse at the Miz. Carly and John, big opportunity for change post-COVID, inequities revealed. Ruth Smith-Hill, busy with technology, Zoom, YouTube, Google, days fly by and daylight's dwindling, enjoy walks and bookmobile at the local market. All right, maybe we'll go back to sharing my screen. Wait. And we'll hear some music. The, um, well, where am I? Sorry, the singer you're about to hear is Dr. Glenn Thomas Rideout, who is Director of Worship and Music at the First UU Congregation in Ann Arbor, Michigan. He's a doctor because he has a PhD in music and he's just a sensational singer. So I wanted you folks to hear this. I hope it sounds good. Circle round for freedom, circle round for peace, for all of us imprisoned, circle for release, circle for the planet, so Children of our children, keep the 
to do a little technical thing here, I hope. Okay. And share. So we will have another reading. This is called A Prayer for This Time by Kenneth P. Langer. Let me find peace within so that I may be calm throughout. Let me find silence within so that I may find compassion throughout. Let me be reminded that some things are worth waiting for. Let me be reminded that the journey is more important than reaching the destination. Let me see that the non-doing is as much a part of life as the doing. Let me be reminded that it is in these moments of holding on that I can find quietude and renewal. It is within these times of inaction that I can find rest. It is in these times of emptiness that I can become full. I will extinguish the chalice. How do I do this? Hmm. Hang on. I am extinguishing the chalice with these closing words. They are the words you just heard in that song, Circle Around for Freedom. And the song was written by an American songwriter, Linda Hirshhorn 
whose uh, spiritual background is in the Jewish religion. Circle round for freedom, circle round for peace, for all of us imprisoned, circle for release, circle for the planet, circle for each soul, for the children of our children, keep the circle And, uh, oh shoot, I forget how to find, carry the flame. So I'm just gonna, let everybody sing, carry the flame. Carry the flame of peace and love until we meet again. Perfectly, un, uh, don't mute, uh, keep yourself muted. Carry the flame of peace and love until we meet again. Oh, yeah. Next Sunday service by Beth Jenkins. Any bowl can be a chalice.